Welcome, I'm Graham Rouse, and I'm here to introduce you to the real thing. That's a Rouse Expand and Load thing for graphics, sculpture, and decorations made with balloons. The basic concept is really quite simple. We take a sheet of plastic, cut into it a very special pattern of slits. Once we do that, we have what we call the Rouse Matrix. That is something that you can then stretch open, expand, so you can load it with balloons. Once you load one of these shapes with balloons, you have one of our configurations, one of more than 140 designed to meet your specialized needs. But today, what we want to do is introduce you to one of the two most popular forms of Rouse Matrix, a Rouse Matrix banner. It's a modular panel, which means you can connect one to the next to the next to make decorations as large as you like, and all by hand without any special tools at all. Once you learn the skills that are associated with this, you'll be able to build graphics like signs, banners, logos, all sorts of marvelous things right on up to a portrait 30 feet tall if you like. Let's start now by showing you some of the kinds of skills you're going to learn. First are skills to prepare your design. One of the approaches you'll learn is how to use Rouse Matrix graph paper to sketch your idea. Second are skills to prepare the matrix. One of the skills you'll learn here is how to connect banners using built-in tabs. Third are skills to prepare the balloons. You'll learn a variety of balloon sizing and tying techniques. Fourth are Rouse original and patented methods exclusively for use with Rouse Matrix. One is especially simple. Another is especially easy to use. A third is especially strong. The fourth is especially fast. We call it speed graphics. We've used it to achieve balloon loading speeds better than one balloon per second. Fifth are skills to install your real RMS balloon project. RMS is so lightweight, you'll learn to hang your designs with magnets, as well as to stand them up. Whether you want a shape with 37 balloons, or a giant graphic with 7,000, choose the real thing, the Rouse Expand and Load thing for your balloon art. It's the world's best canvas for your balloon imagination, and it's exceptionally simple, easy, strong, fast. We're going to start by laying out some Rouse Matrix banners ready to load balloons. The first technique is one we call simple because it's just a pair of balloons a series of pairs that we're going to load. And the first we need to do is to take and turn this very first opening down. You take the center of the balloon uh, and that have here and put it right on that. Now if you just roll that over like that, it's just going to be too big and squish too flat to go in the hole. But if you press down the table and pinch it from the two sides, you see, and then pull uh, the framework out and then roll it into place, you can get it to go in fairly easily. Even though the first balloon is the most difficult, the first row is the most difficult, and after that it gets easier and easier as you go. One of the things you want to watch for is the neck of the balloon. You want to turn that knot down where it's tied so that it lies right against the, the strap when you roll it down. Next one you do the same kind of thing, only now you have additional help. You have the first balloon in there to push against. So you can push against it, squeeze the balloon, and then pull up the opening and just roll it down into place. Then it gets a little bit easier as you go. Then I like to take and do a little bit of what I call a side technique and roll it almost sideways as you squeeze the balloon. Then you can just do it, roll it right in, roll the next one right in, and you're on your way. Then we'll take and do it again, and one more time on this row. By the time you get to the third row, things are getting a little easier, except this first one, it's kind of out in the air. Uh, so it's a little awkward, but you can do it too. Just roll it right into place. The next one, bring up the next pair, and then it just gets a little bit easier and faster as you have a little practice and you have more balloons uh, against which you can push to help load it in place. It is simple, isn't it? Roll pairs of connected balloons into adjacent openings. Now I want to demonstrate with you the first of two techniques that uses the double-ended balloons, the ones that have a neck where it's inflated and tied on one end, and that have an extension on the other end that we've tied together to create a double bubble. This is what we call the easy technique because it's so simple, so easy to use, that we've had young children, eight years old or even younger sometimes, and a 94-year-old neighbor who do it with ease and create successful results. You will be able to create successful results too with the easy technique. 
This is another one that is original and proprietary uh, and patented exclusively for use with the Rouse Matrix systems. So if you decide you want to use it with something else, contact me for a license. But otherwise, why not take advantage of using the world's best canvas for your balloon imagination with the easiest technique in the world for loading balloons and produce results like this that are just so simple and easy that uh, you'll want to maybe not let your neighbors or your customers see you use it because they'll think they can do it too. And they probably can. So we'll just roll the first balloon through. The balloons automatically center themselves and you have a nice strong display. It has the advantages of being a double layer and therefore stiffer and stronger uh, than the single layer techniques but without having to use two frameworks. It's not quite as strong as a strong system but it's easier than any of the other systems for someone with no skills to pick it up and use it successfully. That really is easy, isn't it? Just take that Rouse Double Bubble, roll one of them through each of the openings in your display and you're done. What we'll do is take a pair of balloons, only this time, that first one, we're going to take and put the balloon on its side instead of on the tip and lay it flat on this piece, put it on its side, and just roll it and stand it right straight up. So that first one is uh, here. And what you want is you want the, the strap of the balloon to be around the fattest part of the balloon. So wherever it's fattest, that's where you want that strap to be. Then we'll take the second pair, do the same thing, just roll it right in, and the third one. We'll simply slide it right in place. And we can go along here for that same uh, set of six uh, balloons long that we did in the first demonstration. Two, four, six, and then we'll take and do it again. And we'll take this one and roll it into place, turn it, turn it vertically, take the next one, and just slip it right in there too. Now we have these other balloons to push against, and it's a little bit easier as we go. Now it looks kind of silly with all these balloons waving in the breeze like this, doesn't it? But that's, has, it has a purpose, and we're going to show that to you right now. What we'll do, we're going to take a second matrix that's just like this one. In fact, uh, we're going to orient it the same way. I don't know whether you can see there, but we're going to take that little R. It's in the upper uh, left-hand corner. We rotate it 90 degrees, and we're going to lay it right on top and pull that first balloon up through there, again, to the fattest part of the balloon. And do the same thing on the next one. We can just work our way along here, sliding these balloons up into place inside of the matrix, one right beside the other. You know, it is kind of important to make sure that the balloons are standing straight up when you put them in, because whatever angle you set for the first pair or the first few is how the rest of them are going to line up. You just do it naturally, and you can come back and massage it to get them uh, at even heights across there. But since this is uh, about 20 times as thick, this is a quarter of an inch and this is uh, much larger, then it's about 20 times as strong or stiff when you go to build things with it. Plus, it also gives you a space in here that's empty, so you can slide rods or poles or lines through there in order to give some extra structure for hanging it or for standing it on a base plate with a vertical pipe that's hidden inside those layers. So it makes it stronger. It's very simple, easy kind of a technique uh, that we use, but since it's so strong, we call it the strong technique. Well, how do you like that? An easy way to make your balloon display 20 times as strong without heavy rigid framing. Uh, a fourth system, that call, the, we call it the fast system or speed graphics, will use a string of double-ended balloons that are tied together end to end and simply roll them into place one right after the other. The first balloon, as with the other systems, is the most difficult because you've got to get it started. You just put it down, roll it into place. It automatically stops when you, your neck of your balloon reaches a strap, and you can roll the second one. But unlike the duplet, now you can just keep right on going. And the advantage you have is that all the balloons are anchored on both ends to another balloon to help them stay into place. And yet, because they're lined up, you don't have to worry about picking the right pair. Once you start a row and set it at the beginning place that's proper, then all the balloons will be in their proper sequence, and it saves you some time on that part. Once you get going and get used to it, get a few rows done, you can move even faster. 
In this example, I'm loading balloons into an American flag at almost one balloon per second. That's better than 3,000 balloons per hour. We could complete this whole flag in about five minutes. Now that is fast, isn't it? Just practice so you can learn to roll that string of balloons in at top speed. Later videos will have more valuable information, so be sure to watch them also. But for now, you have the basics of the Rouse patented FAST technique. Today, I want to demonstrate for you the steps you'll need to take in order to move from a simple package of Rouse matrix banners to being set up and ready to load balloons in one of those four Rouse original and patented techniques. Simple. Easy. Strong. Fast. One of the first things that we'll need to do is get the banner material, the Rouse matrix material, out of the package. So we'll simply pull it open. You can slide it right out, take the package and put it aside for now. Inside is an instruction sheet. On uh, one side are the basic instructions for how to assemble the, and, and load the balloons. On the second side is the uh, instruction sheet or the graph paper that you'll use to plan your design. The next thing is to simply unroll this material so you have it all out here in front of you to work with. Now you'll notice that this is kind of wrinkled from being in the package so long. You may just go ahead and work with it like this, but usually what I like to do is turn it over and then go and where it's uh, bent in one direction, I'll bend it back in the other direction. And there, there's a number of places along there, but we'll just give it a little crease here to get the idea and then turn it back over. When you turn it over, what you're looking for here is this upper right, upper left hand corner. There's a little logo R in there. I'll move in for a closer look at the little logo R in the upper left hand corner. You can see it's cut out and uh, the other one, other one is the same way. Now on some occasions it may be that, that, that this is not cut out completely, that the material is still stuck in there, but the R should still show up as it does here. And you can just pull that out to make it easy to identify. If they're not in the upper left hand corner, then you want to turn the material until uh, they are in the upper left hand corner. Now you will notice that we have two pieces here that we're talking about. And in some cases, you may use just one of these panels if you're making a small display that's only about three feet by three feet. But in most cases, you'll probably hook at least two of the panels together in order to build something larger. So we want to show you how to hook them together. First thing is that with them matched with the little R's in the upper left hand corner, and it's possible to take these and move one sheet up and connect these two panels together by hand without any special tools. Or you could take the top one and move it down below and you can connect it to, to build in that direction. Or you can take the material and move it down and connect these end to end on this end. Or you can move them down and connect on the opposite end if, if you want to create something longer in that direction. In order to connect these end to end, You'll notice that we have them aligned so that they're even on the sides. But you'll notice that this looks like a pretty solid block. How are you going to connect those two ends by hand? What we have here is a tab on the end. We call it a carrier tab because it's designed to help you carry the, the matrix around without it sort of falling open. And these are little tiny tabs in here that come apart. All you have to do is put your hand down on one side like this, take the other side and just pull it and they come right off. Now the last one down here uh, comes and jumps a little notch and so it's a little farther down than the rest of them. But now you have the ends here that are ready to use. Do the same thing on the other side. And there we have them. This is extra material you can just put aside and these are ready to connect. Okay, we have these laid out side by side. We're going to take these two and pull this over so that they overlap just about an inch or so. Then we can take this one and this one and we'll take these notches and hook one, wrap the other around it, and then back around the other side and you have them connected together. And that's just what we're looking for. If you want to undo it, you need to pull it back because there's a little hook on the end that helps keep it secure so it does not fall apart accidentally. But you can unwind it and take them apart if you like. You'll continue with all of them along there in order to complete the connection. There now you see 
all of the 11 tabs around here connected one to the other. So it's nice and neat and they don't uh, fall apart. They hold very well. And then what we can do is back up just a little bit and show you that when they open up, they open up with the same pattern as all of the openings around them. Well now I have moved back to our starting position with the two panels, one on top of the other, and the logo cut out in the upper left hand corner. Only this time, instead of connecting them end to end, we're going to connect one above the other. So in this case you'll lay them out so that the edges at this end and the other end are even. And you'll notice that we have pulled the tabs earlier, but what we're going to do now is pull the tabs on the other end, the carrier tabs. We'll just fold it over a couple of times, loosens it up, put one hand down, pull, and you have it off. Do the same thing on the other end. And now that one's out of the way, and it's possible to open the, the, the matrix fully. <clears throat> what we're going to do this time is make connections one above the other. Now the basic pieces work the same, that is the tabs are the same and we're going to connect one by wrapping it around the other. But these are anchored, these are tagged down, so we're going to pop this loose on the end so that it's, uh, it's available to wrap around the other. We'll do this all the way across on both of them, the top one and the bottom one. However, there are also tabs like these on the very top edge and the very bottom edge of the ones. However, we don't need to use those, so it's best to leave those connected. Don't pull them apart until you really need to, uh, and you'll, it'll work out better for you. We've moved down to the right end. You can see these ends are, are matching, and these are very close to each other. Now let's look a little closer so you can see exactly what's happening. We have one of the tabs here, a little short one sticking out there, and we have a mate to that that's right there on the other one. And we'll take those and wrap one around the other. In this case, we'll slide it this end together. Then we'll take and wrap it around the middle, and then the opposite end. And those are connected, and it's hooked together in a nice, safe, and secure way. Now we'll simply repeat that process on all the tabs as you go along all the way to the other end. Well, now that we have the sheets connected and laid out, the next trick is to open them up. In other words, what we'll do is put one hand down just a few rows from the top and stretch it straight up. Move down a little farther and stretch some more. Move down a little farther and stretch some more. And simply go through this process. And then we'll take and move over a little bit and do the same thing again. Lift up and up, lift straight up. Now it's possible that you could just grab it and snatch it open in some odd direction and it'll work out. But ordinarily, your chances of everything working out smoothly are much better if you take the time to move over gradually for a couple of one or two rows of balloons at a time or openings at a time and then lift straight up. Uh, if, you get a, if you don't do that, it's likely you'll get a twist in the material. Now a twist is not fatal to our operations or anything like that, but it will make it easier to, to, to load balloons and to do a neat job of it if you do a neat job of stretching these open uh, a little bit at a time. Now, if you do, like I see here, where it's kind of curled up, one of the options is to take and, and clamp it to the table or anchor it to keep it from jumping around too much for us. Uh, or, if you can just restretch it out and, and you'll be ready to move on to the next step. Sometimes, a couple of these pieces will uh, stick together. And part of what you're doing is to remove any places that stick by stretching it open. Now, let's move in for a closer look and I'll show you how to deal with it, just in case you get some of those that uh, don't want to open up properly. Ordinarily, they'll just come right open when you stretch on them as we were doing there, but occasionally you may get a set that's stuck together and doesn't want to come open. So what you'll do is take your thumbnail and put it right where that split is supposed to be. And then take and bend this back and forth a few times and then pull on it. It should open up for you uh, quite nicely. Now as you can see here, we've gotten our matrix laid out and we've stretched it open and spread it out on the table. And with the the logo R in upper left upper left hand corner. However, for loading, I usually find it a little faster and easier if we rotate this whole thing 90 degrees clockwise. So we'll turn it around in this direction. And I like that because it allows me to come along here and load balloons in a straight row and that makes it a little easier and faster for me. And what we'll do is we'll come down about three, four rows, one, two, three, four, four rows, and I'll 
hook this in this little clamp here to the table. I have another clamp down here about six feet away since this opens to six feet. One, two, three, four. And we'll clamp this in uh, down to the table. And now we have this laid out with about four rows open and available to load and the others hanging over the table. Now after you've loaded the first uh, few rows, you don't need the clamps in order to keep it open, but they are valuable to keep it from the weight of the matrix that's uh, below the table uh, from pulling the rest of it off the table. Well, there you have it and five straightforward steps. How to set up in order to take full advantage of the world's best canvas for your balloon imagination. Simply open that package, take out the matrix, unroll it and be sure to orient it with the logo R in the upper left hand corner. Then connect your panels north, south, east or west to set up a framework as large as you like. Expand that matrix so those openings will be ready for your balloons. Then place it on the table and orient it and secure it to the table so it's ready for you to load those balloons. And of course, you're going to want to watch the next videos, but that information is available right here, so be sure to watch. Thanks to our sponsor, Balloonverse Mall. That's bvsmall.com, your balloon frame supercenter with balloon frames in more sizes, shapes, and grid patterns than anyone else in the Balloonverse.